So welcome back Drifters. So today is going to be another day where we're working on projects for the home gym. I know it's been a little while since we've been working on the car, but this is a priority for me and I'm hoping that it's helping other people as we go. We'll get back to the car stuff when we can. But for right now, we're going to be building an adjustable weight bench. It's The plans I got were from Instructables.com, so the blueprint's not mine, but I am going to be making some modifications to it because I want to make it as strong as I possibly can. Because there's some parts of it that I saw when they built it where there's a few weak points. And just in case, I don't want this thing falling apart on me when I'm going to bench. So we're going to be very careful and we're going to make a few adjustments. But the first thing we're going to do is make a couple cuts. So I'm using some leftover wood from when I made the power rack. I'm also using some fresh wood that I got from the store. It wasn't very expensive. I'm going to put down in the description all the cuts that you're going to need and the type of wood. Also the bolts and nuts and everything like that. So... If you're looking for information as to what you need, it's gonna be down below, be sure to check it out. So there's one piece of equipment that I'm gonna be using that's not necessary, it's called a router. You don't need to use this to do this build, you could do it with just assembling it with strong ties, but I'm gonna use this just to kinda of add a little bit of strength to make it look a little bit neater. It's in the design online and it will make it just slightly stronger, uh, but you don't necessarily need a router. You could do this with a handsaw and just chip away with it with a chisel and you can make these grooves the same way but I have a router and I'm gonna use it. So, and if you decide you wanna get one, this might be a good excuse to buy one. You know, we all love fresh tools. So for this next section, what I'm gonna do is use a four x four, and if you do it properly, you can get all these cuts with one board. So we're gonna use a 45 inch section, two 13 inch sections, and two 12 inch sections. So I'm gonna get to cutting. So just a quick little safety disclaimer. If you're not too familiar with using saws, you probably shouldn't be doing this. You need to be very careful. I've operated saws many times, and of course I may not look like it, but I do know what I'm doing around a saw. If you don't, I would highly suggest finding someone that does, because you don't want to lose a finger over this, so be very careful. Man, I don't know what it is with me today, but I'm cutting all the pieces short. Come on, baby, give me 12 inches, 12 inches. Beautiful, right on the money. All right, so now we got our cuts for the four by four. It's time to move on to the two by twos. All right, so now we're gonna get to doing the two by two cuts. We got four to do. We're doing two of them at 30 inches and we're doing two of them at 16 inches. So we'll go get to cutting. All right, two by twos are done. Now it's on to the two by fours. All right, so for the two by four cuts, I'm gonna be using some old wood I had laying around from when I did my fence. It's just pressure treated wood. We're doing 10 and a half inches for two cuts. So let's get to it. Seems to be just about perfect. All right, so we got these all cut up, so now all we gotta do is make our grooves. To do that, I'm gonna end up using a router, but you can do the same thing with a handsaw and a chisel. So let's get started. So what I'm gonna end up using here is just a simple chisel. It's a wood chisel, not metal chisel, just a wood one. Uh, this one's 13 millimeter or half inch, and that's because that's the size of this bolt. So the chisel might make a groove that's just big enough, so I might be able to, I might take it out just a little bit wider, but I don't wanna make it too big. So we're just gonna start with this, I'm gonna draw out my lines and then we're just gonna start chiseling away a little bit till we get the depth that we need. So the first mark is gonna be three and three eighths. The second mark is gonna be four and three quarters. Third is 11 and an eighth. Fourth is 18 and three eighths. And the fifth is at 26 inches. So let's make these grooves. So all I did was after I drew out my lines, I just took the chisel, hammered it down deep enough and then chiseled out the little bits that were left. It took me forever and then I moved on to using a router because screw that, I got the tool, I'm gonna use it. It makes short work of these grooves and it fits like a glove. So I'm gonna be making a few changes to this thing. I ended up routing a whole bunch of grooves into it, but I didn't like the way this thing was set up. So I'm gonna modify the design a little bit, but I'll show you what I mean. So if you look here, this groove is very, very close to this and I need to be able to use this to get the four x four in there and I need to be able to drive screws through some way to secure this. I mean, it's gonna have wood glue, but I wanna actually physically secure it. 
Problem is, this is a very, very tight area, so this back part is just where the screw is going to set when the board lays completely flat. This would be the first notch for where it's going to sit on an incline. So when I redo this, I'm going to move this groove out here more so I have a little bit more meat here. That's at least the general idea. The rest of them were okay, uh, but I just, with the way this is and considering how much weight it might be supporting, I wanted to make sure that we're gonna have enough meat in here so we don't have to worry about that thing busting on us. So I went in here and drew out some straight lines and this is gonna be the section where the back one's gonna rest. After I get it more together, I'll figure out where in here I'm gonna put the next groove. But I've got the other ones ready to go and I'm just gonna route those out real quick. So one thing I want to note is that if you're going to use a router, don't do it like this. You want to put it on like a workbench or something and secure it because these things can jump around and you could easily hurt yourself. I definitely shouldn't have done it this way and I would not suggest it to anybody else. But, you know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do just to get it done. So be careful out there. All right, so I got these things done just wide enough to where I can fit this half inch bolt on here. Uh, a couple spaces I kind of messed up a little bit, but going to work just fine. The key is that the back side is measured to the proper length more so than the front side. You can go further out, make it wider, it'll just be easier to get into the hole. Uh, but that half inch is basically what we need. So, so far they all look pretty good, pretty level. Um, so the big thing is going to be this one in the back here, which is where I'm going to have to figure out how far in I want to go as far as making it nice and, you know, not a crazy angle. But I'll do that after I drill the holes up front because I need to drill these holes up here so that way we can mount the braces because these are the arms that are going to be pivoting on this piece. So these things are where the bolt's going to ride. And you're going to pick the different angle and that's how you're going to get that. Uh, so what I need to do is drill a hole up here. I believe it's 12 and 7 eighths from the front all the way back and it's about two inches down to the center of the hole. So that's what we're going to do now. So for the first mark what I'm doing is I'm going 12 and 7 eighths back here making a mark. And then I'm going to take my 2x2 two two, and I want to mark the center point of the 2x2 two two as to where I want that hole to be. So I basically just drew a line down the middle here so now I have a nice X where we're going to be drilling our hole. Um, and we're, we're going to need to drill straight through and hopefully we don't split this wood. I'm also going to put a piece of wood underneath so that way we don't actually drill all the way through and ruin anything. It's kind of like this. So let's see if we did it right, hopefully. Center of the hole, 12 and 7 eighths, that's perfect. Beautiful. Now on the other side, this is gonna be a hopefully we drilled it straight moment. That's a little bit off, but it's close. It's very close. So if anything, we could just file the difference to make it even. But that's close enough that that should work. It's not the most perfect looking hole, but it'll definitely do the trick. So for this first piece, these are the 30 inch pieces. We're gonna go two inches in for the first hole and 16 inches to the center of the second hole. So I'm just gonna measure those out and do some drilling. That's pretty good, our hole's a little bit off, but not bad. So while I was drilling these holes, I drilled this one a little bit too close and you can see it started splitting. So I'm gonna actually have to improvise here because Lowe's is closed because it's too late and they close early because of this whole quarantine thing. So what I did is I took a one by two and I'm gonna basically clamp them together and glue them. Um, and then we're gonna use this. This is actually slightly thicker than what a two by two would be. So in the end, it might actually make it a little stronger, but you know, Sometimes when we make mistakes, some good things come out of it. So if anything, it'll look kind of nice. So that's what I'm gonna do. Just glue these together, clamp them. When they're dry, we'll attempt to re-drill in the holes. So let's do it. So all I'm gonna use to basically hold this together is a little bit of tight bond. It's just wood glue, but this stuff works really well. And all I'm gonna do is just lube up this thing with it. We're gonna cover it up real good. And then we're gonna come back with some clamps and just tie it all together. It'd be something like that, nothing too crazy. Do the same thing on the opposite side. Some would say this is a bit excessive, and they'd probably be right. And then like that, we're just gonna make a wood sandwich. All right, so now's where we get our clamps. Crank it on there, do the same thing on the other side. There we go. Got the glue coming all the way out the edge. I'm just gonna wipe that excess off. We should be good for this one, we'll let it harden. This is 
now we got it all cleaned up, ready to go. Do the same thing for the other side, then we'll drill our other holes. Whew, always solving problems. All right, now we wait. All right, so I let these things dry overnight because I ran out of daylight. I wasn't able to finish. I spent a lot of time doing some routing and stuff like that, but you can see it's a nice solid block now. So all I gotta do is sand off a little bit of this excess glue. Not a big deal. I'll do that later, but what I'm gonna do first is try to redraw those holes. I made a slight modification with these two by twos and I'm gonna go one inch down from the top just to make this thing fit right and hopefully it'll work. I'm gonna test and tune and we'll see how it does. So let's do it. So I marked at one inch from the top and I also marked at three quarters of an inch in, which should be dead center. See if we can drill it this time. Check our measurements. Perfect, we're dead center. Beautiful. Now I just gotta repeat that like four more times. Wish me luck. So for the next thing, we need to take this and round all the edges just so this way the bolt can fit behind it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. What's up, Bobo? What's up, Polly? So when you're looking down here, what you'll see is this bolt going through this piece. Uh, this is where there's gonna be one on the opposite side, and then this is the center hole where this bolt's gonna go. And you see I have this dug deep enough so it sets just flush here. And then this is the part where the problem is. You can see that it just barely contacts. So what we're gonna do is just round off this edge a little bit so that way it'll fit in there just right. So let's get to it. So when I was using the router, I didn't realize that I was using the wrong size bit and it wasn't gonna fit all the way through a two by two board. So we ended up having to come up with a new plan for this piece. But in the meantime, I decided to start working on the bottom posts and the upper posts by making grooves so that way we can fit the four by four inside of it. The bottom four by four is a 12 inch, the top one is a 13. Now, if you wanna make this thing shorter or taller, you may have to adjust the length of that four by four. But that just depends on how tall you are and what you want. But the size that I was using puts it pretty close to the average size bench. Maybe a little bit taller than what you would expect. Now that same process can be done with a hammer and a chisel. It's just going to take you all day. But it's also not necessary to do these grooves. I'm doing it just because I want to do it. It's in the diagram and it's just something fun to do. But you could easily just mount it straight on top. Just put this brick on here and use some of those strong ties to patch them together. So you don't have to do the notches, but if you're feeling up to it and you want to, you definitely can. It's not too difficult, it's just time consuming. So now all I'm gonna do is take my sanding block, which is just a piece of wood with sandpaper on it, and sand these things to where they're flush, just to smooth it out, because there's a few spots that are kind of uneven. And I'm gonna get it as level as I possibly can, so that way when we put this thing together, it's not gonna be all wobbly. So I'm just gonna get to doing this. So now what we're gonna do is make these posts. What I'm gonna do is on the bottom, get over there. So what I'm going to do is on the bottom, we're going to drill some holes and we're going to make a bolt go through this. Basically just take two lag bolts and run them through to secure it. We're also going to glue it in place, but the lag bolts, I just want to be there to be really strong. But I don't want lag bolts sitting like on the outside because this is going to sit on the bottom of the ground and we don't want this thing being all wobbly. So what we're going to do is we're going to countersink it. Now I don't have a bore big enough, so I'm just going to use a hammer and chisel to kind of bore it out and make a little area where we can have it sit flush. So that's what I'm going to do. So all I'm doing to square this up is I'm just gonna get it as flush as I can. Obviously these two pieces of wood aren't perfectly right because of the way that it was pressure treated. They're not completely even on the sides, but I'm gonna get it as close as I can. And then I'm just gonna drill two holes for pilot holes. So that way it hopefully doesn't split open and crack everywhere. Then after we do the pilot holes, I'm gonna bore out just a little section out here using a hammer and chisel, and then we'll screw in the lag bolts. So the lag bolts that I'm using are about three and a quarter inch in depth. Um, if you can get them a little bit bigger, that'd probably be better, but these are all I had laying around, and so that's what I'm going to use. So the idea is that we're going to take this and go deep enough so we can counter bore it below this level so it's flush, the way it's not rocking, but also so we get enough thread into that 4x4. So let's get started. Cool. So now I'm going to take a slightly larger drill bit just to open the hole up a little bit. Being careful not to go too deep with it because I still want this thing to bite. And then now I'm just going to take a chisel. So when you're done you'll end up with something kind of like this. It's not super deep but it's just enough to where that bolt will sit flush. You could go a little bit deeper but I want to make sure I still have enough meat in here as well as it goes through. So now all I'm going to do is take the screw, 
screw it in and then we'll drill the other hole. I want to make sure that this thing's tight in there when I do the other one so that way it doesn't move at all. So that's what I'm going to do. There we go. Alright, so now you can see it's countersunk, it doesn't stick above, so it's nice and flush. That's what we're looking for. There we go. Okay. Cool. May not be the prettiest thing in the world, but you know for damn sure it's gonna work. So now I'm just gonna repeat this process like eight more times. Okay, so now we're at the point where we need to start putting this thing together. Basically, this piece is gonna sit up here like this, and this leg is gonna sit up under here like this. They're both identical, so it doesn't really matter which one you do. Uh, but the big thing is, once you get them on here, what I need to do is I'm gonna do the same thing I did on the bottom of them up here. We're gonna basically countersink those bolts, run one on this side, one on this side, and then the legs should all be together, and then we'll move on to assembly, which should be pretty soon. One of the best parts about being stuck at home a lot is that I get to spend a lot of time with my dogs. My dogs have always been there for me when I needed them the most, and sometimes they like just sitting and watching what I do, even if it is just assembling a little weight bench. Gotta love these guys. You know, they're always here for me, even if I'm not here for them. Now I get to kind of pay it back a little bit. So I'm trying to stay focused and stay positive during this whole thing, even if it means staying up super late working on a weight bench. We'll get it done eventually. So after I got this piece all cut out, one thing I noticed is that it was just slightly longer than what I needed, and that's mainly because the hole that I drilled in the front was a little bit off, so I had to take off about an eighth of an inch. Whenever you're doing this, you're gonna have to just check to make sure it clears, and I'll show you what I mean in a second. But, you know, just clearance it for what you need. It should be pretty close to 30 inches, but for mine, I had to go 29 and 7 eighths. So you'll just have to check that out whenever you get there. As long as your holes are straight, you should be good. So this is the piece that's gonna be bracing the whole bench. What we need to do is round off all these corners so that way when it's rotating around, it's not gonna hit the board that's gonna be sitting above it. I'll show you what I mean. The reason that we have to round this off is because when you set this up, you're gonna notice that there's a little edge here. We want this edge to be completely flush with this piece here because this is where the back to the bench is gonna lay. So we can't have this bumping into it. One of the easiest ways I found to do this is to take your marker when you have it in position and just draw a line and then adjust the positioning and then draw another line. And then we'll do one at the very back. So now we have a general idea where it needs to go. So now that we have our lines drawn, all I'm gonna do is take this piece out and then start sanding it to where it's nice and curved. Shouldn't be too difficult. So the way I like to sand these is on a sander, but the way that I found it's easiest to do it is when you set it up kind of like this. You just have to be careful not to let it get away from you, but I like it because then I can use two hands on the wood when I'm going to do my sanding. That way I can get a good angle on it. I'll show you what I mean. So my sander has seen a lot of mileage over the years. I've used it on many different projects, many different cars. And well, I think today was the day that it finally decided, you know what, I'm done, I quit. You'll see what I mean here in a second. Yeah, I think it's time I get a new sander. And people wonder why this stuff takes me way longer than it's supposed to. Holy shit, that thing just broke. Wow. All right, I guess I'm gonna be doing this one by hand. Rip. This is probably gonna take me a little while. <sighs> All right, so the first piece we got here, you can see I got it pretty good. I did both sides rounded like this. It took me a long ass time to get it done, as you can tell by the sun going down but I think it turned out all right. So now we're gonna move on to assembly. First thing we gotta do for assembly is take our eight inch bolt with our two washers and a nut. We're gonna run that through the front half of this 30 inch section, which is the piece that goes to the backboard that's gonna mount to this. So we're just gonna slide the bolt through here, just like so. And then we're gonna slide this through the front hole. So that's the first piece. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our pin here, run our four inch bolt through there, we're gonna run that through the second hole on the 30 inch piece. And then on the back side, we're just gonna put a washer, just a nice little washer in there, and a lock nut. You don't have to use a lock nut, I just prefer using them if I have them. 
and then we're just gonna tighten this down. So one thing I'm discovering from doing this is that on this piece here, I wanna make one additional washer go in between this gap. I don't think I covered that initially because I didn't really think it was gonna be an issue, but that's a change I'm making and it's really making a big difference. So just get three washers for this four inch bolt. It'll make a difference. And when I'm tightening this thing down, I just wanna get it just tight enough to where I can still move it, but that it's not gonna come loose. So that's another reason why I like the lock nuts. They don't typically back out like regular nuts will. There we go. So now we got this side on here, it's moving pretty good. We're gonna go to the other side and do the exact same thing. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my washer and my lock nut and put the washer in first and then the lock nut on this side to secure the front. So same thing like the first one, we wanna make sure it's tight but loose enough that we can still move this thing around. So I'm just gonna do that real quick. There we go. Yeah, all right, there we go. So that's good. Then we'll just secure this one with a washer and a nut, just like we did on the other side. There we go. All right, so that moves freely. That moves freely. So now all we need to do is get these back side. Now this is where the 12 inch bolt comes into play. These are all half inch thread. And what we're doing with this 12 inch bolt is we're gonna run it through here. But to make it fit, what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna put the wood between these two washers here. So you're gonna have nut, washer, wood, washer, nut. All that's gonna do is secure these arms so they can't move left to right. It's gonna hold them in the right position and this is the bar that's gonna lock in those notches so you can adjust the angle of the bench. So we'll put this in and we'll go from there. So what you may have to do to install this is push it further through one way in order to be able to pull it the rest the other way. So kind of like that and then you'll be able to slide it in here. There she goes. So now all I'm doing is I'm squeezing it tight so that way I've got it nice and square and I'm going to use that to set my gap for these two boards here. There we go. Now I'll just tighten down the washers and nuts and we should be good to go. Okay, that should be good. So the back is nice and secure now. So now we should be able to lift this up and then as we do this, this should come down. That sets in the groove. So this would be angle number one. And then you come up here, number two. And of course, straight up and down. So the big thing is if you wanna make a different angle, you can cut these grooves at different sizes depending on the angle that you want. You don't necessarily need to do all these grooves if you don't think you're gonna use them all. So, and the best part is that it'll go in here and it'll set flat. So that way we'll be able to use this for doing a flat bench as well. All right, so as you can tell, it's been another long day, but uh, we're finally getting up to the seat support, which is where the two by fours come in. These are both 10 and a half inches. We cut them earlier. And all we're gonna do is they're gonna go right here, and we're gonna basically screw them into this place right here. It's real simple. Uh, first, we're gonna do, drill some pilot holes, then just put in some screws. Uh, but when we do the screws, I'm gonna put a little wood glue in between just to make sure that it holds it nice and solid. Now you can see the whole thing's nice and clamped up. We're just gonna drill some pilot holes in here on both sides. And then we'll uh, put some wood glue and screws in. Now we'll just slap on a little bit of glue and then we'll screw it all back together. There we go, nice and easy. Now comes the fun part and messy part. Ooh, almost lost it. Oh boy, oh fuck. Oh shit. Okay, let's get some screws in there. There we go. Wipe off the excess glue, we should be good. All right, so the glue should be dry by now. We had it on here for a while drying out. That's why I'm inside now, because it got too late out there. But now we got these two by fours on here, and it's got a much wider platform, so we should have a good thing to screw into for the seat, as well as where we're gonna put the back for where the back's gonna go. So I need to go grab those pieces real quick, and I'll show you what I mean. So what we're gonna be using for the back and the seat is gonna be a three quarter inch thick piece of plywood. Uh, luckily, if you go to most of your hardware stores, you'll be able to get this thing cut at the store, so you don't even have to worry about that too much. The first piece is 14 inches by 12 inches, and the second piece is 34 inches by 12 inches. So basically, as long as you got a 12 inch piece that's 12 inches wide, you can get that cut and it should work pretty well. And then you don't have to do any of the cuts if you don't want to, because for me, doing a rip cut's kind of hard to do if you don't have a table saw. So luckily, they'll do that for you and it doesn't cost a penny. 
So all we're gonna do is take the 14 inch piece, we're gonna set it up here. I'm gonna drill some pilot holes and put some screws in it so that way we can put it on here just to get it all mocked up. And then of course later when we go to put the vinyl and the padding in, we can take it off and do all that later. So I'm gonna get that set up and I'm, what I'm gonna do is try to make sure it's nice and flush and even on all sides as well as that we're gonna have enough room for this back piece that's 34 inches, so when it comes up, it's not gonna hit it. So the way that I found works best is to set it up in the very top notch, which is gonna be the highest point that it's gonna be, and then I'm gonna set it all the way back and then move it up just, just a hair, so that way I can have it up off of here, so there's a nice little gap in between the seat and this backboard. It doesn't have to be anything too crazy, it just has to have enough room so that when we set it down, it's not hitting it or anything like that, so. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna center these up, drill some pilot holes, and screw them in. This should be pretty close here. So all I'm gonna do is just clamp it. That way it can't move. And then we'll make our marks and drill our holes. That should be pretty good. So now when I come down, it should be clear. And then we can come all the way up. Still clear. Cool. That looks pretty good. I like to call this measuring technique that I haven't slept in like three days and I really just want to get this job done. Seems to work okay if you ask me. So when it comes to setting this gap, what I'm going to do is just basically go to the edge of these 2x4s here. So that way it'll give me a nice little gap in between here so we don't have to worry about it hitting at all. But yet it's also not sitting too far off the edge of here. So we should be good to go. If I wanted to, I could probably back this up about that far and it would still be okay. Just so it has enough space so when this thing goes back, it's not going to hit that. Okay, so I got this thing squared up about as good as I'm going to get it. Now all I'm going to do, drill some pilot holes and screw it in. Let's get it. Get some vinyl on top of it and put this thing to the test. Whew. This is the kind of distractions I gotta deal with over here behind the scenes. This boy likes to eat when we're trying to film. This boy's just chilling and this boy, well, he's won't stop playing with that dang string. Uh, oh, I forgot my tools. Of course, that's what he does. Might be a minute. <laughs> you good, Tony? You done, you done eating? You good? Okay. All right, so now I got these things off. All I did was unscrew these bottom plates here so that way we can mount our vinyl and our padding. It's literally just some styrofoam. Well, not styrofoam, it's just regular foam and some vinyl fabric that we got. My mom actually had some on her because Joann's and all those places are closed. You don't have to do this, but I'm doing it just because I want to have some cushion on there. You could honestly use this just as bare wood, but it's gonna be uncomfortable and you might get splinters, so. We're gonna put some of this on. First thing that we're gonna do before we screw it back on is we're just gonna staple the back side and then we'll screw it on and then we'll be able to reach all the other sides on the inside of it. So we're just gonna do that real quick. We're gonna do it for both sides of these and then get it done. So you'll see there that there's a couple different layers of this foam and it looks really tall, but when you squish it down, you'll see that it's only about that tall. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna squish it real tight and then wrap the vinyl on top on the back side, we're just gonna staple it right there. Boom. And that should hold pretty tight right there. All right, so now what we got is just the back side stapled in, so we're gonna just take this, screw this back down, and then finish stapling the rest of it on, so. And in the corners, we're just gonna do like hospital corners, little 45 degree angles, pull them real nice and tight, and staple them in there. <laughs> just this spot for right now, and then I'm gonna do the <laughs> The dogs. Oh my goodness, boys. Boys. Got it. Why don't you cut it? Well, because I want it to fold and look nice. Because so you're a perfectionist. Make it look like shit like I do. That's the difference between you and me. I look for functionality. You look for functionality and good looks. All right. I don't think he wants me to get up. Probably not. I'm going to stay here. Oh. If you want to. Go ahead and turn the thing around. <laughs> <laughs> That's in there. 
we're on there. So now we just gotta get this thing stapled in. All right. So even though this may look a little bit lumpy, it's actually really nice. It's a little bit taller than I wanted. I think it's just because the foam is a little bit thick, but it works just fine because as soon as you go to sit down, it squishes, it's firm, it doesn't have a lot of give to it, and it's not you're not gonna be slipping on this. It's also here because it's gonna keep moisture and sweat from getting into the wood. Now we could have just treated the wood and that been it, but you know, I kinda liked it feeling like it was an actual gym bench, even though it's not, you know, it's not professional, it's the amateur stuff but it works. And we're gonna go test it and show you just what I mean. So let's go do it. Seems to be holding pretty good if you ask me. I'm not sliding and the bench isn't moving. So it feels pretty good. Woo! <laughs> I'm happy with that. Here we go. So now it's time to test out how it goes on the flat. Pretty sure it's still gonna be awesome. Oh yeah. This thing feels good. Oh, this thing feels amazing. Nice and solid, especially considering it's on carpet, which is less than ideal. Whew. Man, I can't tell you how good this thing feels. It feels so good to bench again. It's been almost a whole month since the last time I benched, and man, it feels great. The bump is the cure, yeah. That's a shout out to Anton Viant. Probably said that all wrong, but if you know who he is, you know what I'm talking about. So anyway, I have to say, this bench here is way more than I could have ever expected. It's very solid, very sturdy. The way that I have it built is very strong, and we just put it to the test. We put about 195 pounds on there, plus my body weight. I'm about 190, so you do the math. It's a lot of weight, and it took it just fine. Now, the only thing that I would say is there's two main suggestions I have if you're going to do this. First, measure the backboard to your height when you're sitting. Mine is a little bit tall. I should have cut it a little bit shorter, but you know, you're just gonna have to do that based off of your height. Number two, if you do decide to put foam in vinyl, get some thin foam, because that foam's real thick. And make sure that the vinyl you get is something that sticks and doesn't slide. This stuff is great. I'm not sliding at all. I just dig into it when I go to push, and it feels great. So that's one of the, those, those are like the two main tips that I'd have for you if you're looking to do this. And well, other than that, the other thing is you're just going to have to file fit a few things. There's a few spots where, you know, if your holes aren't drilled perfectly on center, you may have to shave a little bit off here or there. So it's all going to come down to personal preference, setting your angles, all that kind of stuff. If you want a different angle, you can do that. But what I gave you in this video is going to be very close and it's going to work. You may have to file fit some areas just to get it just right, but you'll be able to do it. It's not that bad. It does take a lot of time, though. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful to you. Hope it didn't bore you too bad. You know, this thing took me a lot longer than I expected, but that's how it goes when you make mistakes, and I make a lot of them, so it's just how it goes. So if you haven't already, consider subscribing, because I got a few more plans. In the next episode, we're probably going to be making a deadlifting platform. I mean, I got this nice big old sheet of wood back there that we're going to use, and believe it or not, sheets from this plywood that we use for the back is also what we're going to use for that. So it all works out together. We're going to have a full gym set up by the end of this, so... Sometimes, what is it, necessity is the mother of all inventions, so we didn't start with a bench, but now we have an adjustable weight bench that can handle a ton of weight. So anyway, guys, have a great day. I'll see you all in the next one, and just remember, keep it nice and easy.